Um, my name is Shwathana Mehta. I've been brought up in a family wherein my parents uh, are working in the field of finance and law. And so I'm one of the first artists in the family so far. And um, I remember um, these memories from my childhood where um, my mother actually encouraged me to uh, get into painting and um, she encouraged me to free freely play around with paints as a child. Um, soon after my parents, they noticed my inclination towards art and they pushed me to hone my skills in painting and drawing, specifically painting. And um, I realized that I was able to freely express my uh, feelings and personal narratives through painting. And um, in high school, I knew that I wanted to pursue being a visual artist professionally. And uh, I wanted to go to art school. And um, my parents have been very supportive since then through the entire process of me um, being an artist. So they're in the fine arts and law. Uh, yes, in fine uh, finance and law. Oh, finance and law, not fine arts and law. Okay. Yes. And are they based in the country or are they out of the country? Uh, they're based out of the country. They're based back home in India. What part of India are you from? Uh, from Mumbai, India. Okay. Um, because I wanted to talk about the influence of where you're from. Oh, yes. Like how, does that, how does that interact with your work? Um, I feel like uh, the background that I've been brought up in is very rich and very dense uh, in colors and um, the culture in India is very prominent. And I feel like uh, growing up, I was able to really showcase that part of me and that identity um, in the last couple of years through my work and through the colors that I was using and the way that I was using them. And I feel like in the past year or so, there's been a shift in my work. Uh, I started to use a limited color palette and um, I feel like that's very contrast to, um, I would say, the influence that I've gotten growing up from India. But I do enjoy the contrast between both, I feel like. Right, because there's a, a tradition of bright colors in, in it is, clothing yeah. there. and. And um, I'm not enough of a historian on Indian culture, but how does how do you feel about all of that? Like, how does was that something that you had to kind of make a decision to kind of go in a different direction from? I feel like uh, it came really naturally when I wanted to make a change in the way that I was uh, depicting my paintings and the color palette I was using in specific. Um, it was a very natural shift, I would say, and I do enjoy painting with a lot of colors and a lot of variety, but at the same time, I feel like now I do enjoy painting with a restrictive or a limited color palette as well. So describe this um, palette. Oh, yes, absolutely. I I'm feel thinking like, it's um, like blue, a lot of blue. Yes, a lot of somber tones. I feel like a lot of blues, a lot of pinks, uh, hues of white is what I've been using, um, since 2023 for a lot of my works. How did you discover that palette? I feel like I actually randomly stumbled upon it, to be very honest. Um, when I was doing my first painting in the white series that I did last year, um, I just started using a lot of whites, um, a lot of blush pinks and reds kind of peeking through within the painting. And I enjoyed the way that the painting was looking and uh, the imagery that it created that I felt just, I was naturally drawn to it. And I wanted to repeat that uh, within the next couple pieces that I had in the series. And I feel like it just became very natural to use that color palette. And I've been kind of using and tweaking that and playing around with that ever since. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of fits with the subject you're doing. It is interesting, yeah. You're you're not um, you're not trying to be too contemporary, but you're away from the traditional enough that I you're not you're not pushing it past painting. 
Um, I'm interested in painting. I, I mean, I understand and have an interest in conceptual art and abstraction and, you know, the history of different things. But um, I think when you're taking the figure out of the context of the laws of gravity, when you're taking the figure out of the context of interior space, deliberately positioning something, then it becomes um, coming from an, an, an imaginative place mm -hmm. as opposed to a kind of fine art history moment integrated into your work or trying to be too contemporary or something, you know? Yeah, I agree with you, yes. It's hard to make a painting that kind of expresses yourself, but also has a feeling of naturalism and your work also has a little bit of an abstract quality to it because of the the way you're kind of like you might have like some legs coming out this way oh yes and some water and and it's um it's like um very geometric in a certain way from at least from from what i can tell and also um the color range gives it a sort of um quiet geometry you know, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's, um, I think that's a really interesting way to work. I don't see a whole lot of that. A lot of pe uh, people are very much for a kind of, um, almost like a punk rock kind of aesthetic or a trashy pop art aesthetic, mm -hmm. I find, especially students. Yes. Right. So how long ago did you graduate? I actually graduated last summer, um, okay. so 2023. Okay. And did you find that school was something you, you were kind of, you had to unwind from, or did you find that it gave you a direction and sent you, and your, your studies kind of sent you in the direction you're in now, or you had to rebel, or was it, was it awkward, or how, how did that work? I feel like it definitely gave me a sense of direction. Uh, and the four years I was in art school definitely gave me a very baseline and very extensive knowledge as well um, that is, ha has been helped me since then. And um, I do feel like it was just life after art school um, has been very interesting to navigate. Uh, once you're out in the real world, um, it's definitely been challenging, yet rewarding at times as uh, an artist, especially uh, in this year of 2024. Uh, I would say um, I've been able to learn a lot uh, just being an independent artist and kind of navigating that way on my own. Uh, do you feel I like this is something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, or do you feel like it's just kind of a hobby? Oh, I definitely feel like this is something that I want still want to pursue for the rest of my life. You are in a room and you don't have any art on the walls. Yes, <laughs> I actually don't, but I intend to do that very soon. <laughs> do you like to live around your own work? Um, I feel like I have conflicting thoughts about that. A lot of times I feel like I want to live around my own. I mean, work. I happen to be at a show that I'm putting together, so I don't. Sometimes I have, yeah, I have some of my paintings at home, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes, sometimes paintings are better in other people's homes or other people's galleries. Yes, I get that perspective too. I feel like I have a lot of conflicting thoughts about it. Um, and so for the moment, I just kind of have shunned that and don't have any of my work um, in the place I live. Yeah. I don't, I don't, if, I had some friends, actually a friend of mine was in the hospital and they hung one of his paintings by his hospital bed. That was interesting. Oh, that is interesting. That actually kind of really felt right in a, in a strange mm -hmm. kind of way, in, a, in the hospital room right across from the bed. Um, so do you come from a large family or are you an only child? I'm the only child. Oh, that's different. So you don't have brothers and sisters doing finance and law looking down on you and acting. Oh, like no, 
I, I'm so grateful that I've been born in a family where everyone's just been so supportive. Uh, even though I'm the first artist in this family, um, yeah, I definitely feel very... Well, as painting goes and as being an artist goes in the world, generally, um, unless you're independently wealthy, you work three jobs, your family helps you out, you know, there's, um, you need a certain amount of time to make paintings. Oh, yes. And time is money. And, you know, so if you, if and most people, I find that a lot of artists that are, when they're starting out as you are, uh, even though you're working at a professional level already, um, you, you have to either get a grant or have family help or be independently wealthy or something, or just be selling enough work to, you know, so you'll get to a point where your career will be launched enough and you'll have enough collectors. After we finish doing this video, all of the collectors will pile in and start, you know, this is definitely going to make you famous. That's, that's why we're doing this. <laughs> No, but a few people will see it. And I think a few people will find an appreciation for your work that they didn't see before, hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, and um, I've interviewed a lot of artists of different walks of life. Mm -hmm. Like I've interviewed very famous artists, um, unknown artists. It's it's not really a question of that. It's a question of whether the work has something of value that the world should know about. Hmm. And as an, as an artist myself, I know that it's, you know, like painting is a difficult thing to get in front of people to get out there. So you have to, um, you have to be the champion of your art. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like you're a good spokesperson and champion of your art. And it seems like you have a natural belief in the, uh, in the idea that you're working on. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your idea. So these figures in your work that are kind of integrated, integrated and kind of interacting with, it's funny, I didn't prepare any questions, but I have this really clear picture of the kind of your paintings mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, the, um, the, is there a narrative going through all of this work? Oh, I mean, yes. inevitably, I have to like ask some corny questions, but it, <laughs> is there is there a kind of is there some? Do you actually like have a diary where you write things, or do you feel like the paintings are a diary, or you know what I mean? Oh yes, definitely. I totally get that. Um, yes, there is um, a narrative to answer your question, which is kind of strung along uh, the couple of series that I did last year, um, kind of revolving around this idea of unrecallable memories and death, decay and anxiety, um, really heavy topics that I wanted to showcase um, and creating this physiological space as well. Um, and I wanted the paintings to revolve around these multiple ideas. And okay, so give me an um, example of one of those ideas. Oh, yes, of course. Um, so one of the paintings that I actually started off with the wide series that I did was a pair of enhanced feet that I created um, with, again, limited color palette, a large empty space, and just creating emphasis on those uh, in that pair of feet with the somber tones of red peeking through and the whites. It was a very simplified imagery. Um, and I felt like it worked very well. And that was the first painting I did in the series. And I was able to get a lot of positive feedback. And that's kind of how I started using repetition of imagery uh, and made multiple paintings um, throughout the series uh, with a similar kind of imagery uh, per se. And to answer your uh, second question, a lot of the times when I am beginning uh, a painting, I do have a written idea or plan um, to kind of initiate the process of piece. And uh, from there on forth, I try to collect or take references that I feel like would support that idea. And I think about the materials I could use or 
I think about uh, the limited color palette. Like, give me an in, give me an example of what kind of an idea would go through your head before you make a painting, or what you would try to think of. Oh yes, um, I would say when I start off, the idea that would have in mind is what I wanted to depict, uh, what narrative or what emotions I want the painting to evoke um, through that particular piece. Um, that would be the initial or the utmost importance that I would give to a painting. And then trying to figure out what imagery I could use to help me depict that okay, idea. So then that's the next question. Um, are you using a, a source material or do you have some figure studies here and then you're kind of putting it together with your imagination or how what how do you make the how do you make the, are you working from sort of a sketch or how, how do you do it yes a lot of times i feel like um i do work through a sketch oh uh, to just make things easier for me and to help me envision that idea um so it's just a sketch the ideas that i just have in mind i put it all together and i from there on i figure out things of uh, adding details like what mediums I might want to use or the color palette that I might want to use for this piece. And yeah, I feel like right after that, I jump right into the painting and kind of figure things out through that process. Hmm. So it's not, you don't have a little drawing of kind of what you want the painting to be, or you do? A lot of times I do. And a lot of times I actually don't. Um, I feel like my the way that I work is best when I write things down in very detail about how I want a painting to look like. And for me, that works very well. So um, when you're and, writing this down, are you describing the image or is yes. it? Oh, so, you're, so it might be like two floating, limbs over the ocean and yes but is it very matter of fact or is it somewhat poetic the way you're writing about it i feel like it's a mixture of both have uh, you ever I checked out the work of william blake yes he sometimes will even have the writing kind of around around the picture almost like a medieval um escapes me but i've looked at a lot of them those uh, medieval almost watercolors with uh, text kind of, I mean, that would be a step that I don't know if I would go in that direction if I was you of adding text to the work because then it brings it in a whole other direction, almost like Anselm Kiefer or some kind of, but that's the other thing I wanted to, to say about your work is that it doesn't um, immediately make me think of another artist. Mm, like I, I don't say, oh, that reminds me of, or your yeah. book is somewhat like de Kooning and, you know, that uh -huh. that seems to be sort of like the way that a lot of people talk about art is the first thing they'll do is try to figure out what other artists it reminds them of. Mm -hmm. And I don't always try to do that. And I don't think it would be easy to really do that with your work because I haven't seen anything similar to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And I'm saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, and what are some of the things that you have coming up that you want to accomplish? Like, what do you have on the agenda? Do you have some shows and... Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh... I feel like your video just cut out oh. and I couldn't hear what you said. I'm so sorry about oh. that. Okay. How about now? Am I back now? Yes, perfect. Okay. I was going to say, uh, what do you have coming yes. up? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. What do you have coming up? Oh, yes. Um, of course. I'm actually working on a new body of work at the moment, uh, which would be loose extension of um, a couple of works I did last year, uh, kind of working on this idea again of unrecallable memories and creating a physiological space and um, for the new year of 2024, but it's very much uh, in progress right now. Uh, but I'm hoping uh, to work around um, oil paintings again for this year 
and yeah that's very much in progress that's good okay well it was excellent talking to you about your work thank you so much um and uh we'll hear from you shortly thank you so much All right. have Bye. a great afternoon Bye. You too. Thank you.